how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from chichichicken.com here with a Photoshop advanced tutorial. Today we're gonna go over how to make a flame logo. The concept behind making something out of flames isn't exactly difficult, but I consider it advanced just because it takes some cognitive processing on your end. You're gonna have to be the one that kind of figures out how all of these different flames, you know, come together to make your shape. So that's why I would consider this advanced instead of intermediate or beginner. In any case, let's go ahead and just get right into this. We'll start up a new document. I'll go with my usual 1280 by 720. I'll just throw in, ah, oh, darn, I was hoping black would be there. Oh well, no big deal. We'll just go ahead and hit OK. We'll make our background black. And I'll just name this BG because that's going to be my background. And I'm just going to go ahead and get my logo ready. So I'll grab my brush with my logo on it. And I'll give it a click. Make sure it's centered all right. And so here we are. We've got the white logo that we're ready to start off with. And we've got a black background going. So, so far, so good. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up copying and pasting some fire images into this document and using those to pretty much create the fire logo that we're trying to create in the end of this. And we're going to be using this as a basis, but I'm going to tell you right now that having a white logo behind this the whole time is a little bit of annoying. So what we're going to do is turn this into an outline. So we'll turn the fill all the way down to 0% and give this a stroke, make sure it's white, put the size down to one pixel, put it on the inside, and put the opacity to 20%. So that way we get this nice kind of just gray outline that gives us an idea of where we're gonna be putting all of our fire. So once your outline is all set up, let's go ahead and go to this little website right here where we've got all of our fire images. Here's the little link up here, which I should be posting in the description later for you anyway. And so we've got five different fire images down here, all on black backgrounds, which is exactly what we want. And the screen size for these is actually a really good dimension, but you're going to have to be a member of this site. You're going to have to, you know, sign up. See, I'm logged in as BT Bias. So you're going to have to sign up to download these, but if you want, you can just right click the image up here and copy it. You're good that way but I'm just gonna go ahead and grab all of the large versions of these and copy them into my Photoshop document real fast okay so now I've got all of my fire images copied into my little Photoshop document right here but they're a little bit too big so I'm just gonna select them all and size them down into a size that will actually fit on my canvas so that looks about right right there and what you're gonna wanna do is go through each of these fire images right here and set their blend mode to screen so once all of these are set to screen go ahead and select them all and put them into a group doesn't really matter what the group is called group one is just fine because you're going to rename it later anyway so go ahead and turn off all of these fire layers and put the group down here at the bottom and that's just going to serve as like the the original copy of all of these so what we're going to go ahead and do with this is go ahead and right click group one and duplicate the group and since I'm going to go ahead and work with my far left arrow right there, I'm just going to call this far left. And I'm going to drag this up here. So just go ahead and pick a random fire image. So I'll just start off with the first one here. And bring up the transform tool and turn it and size it down so it fits a little bit better. Or size it up if you're using the smaller images. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and right click and go to the warp right here. And right now, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the basic concept of, you know, one method that you can do. But this is entirely up to you of how you actually warp your fire. What I like to do is push in this bottom part right here. Maybe stretch it out a little bit so it goes into the corner, something like that. But I want a more solid, fiery edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this kind of body of fire down like so, just so we get a, 
a better edge going along along this corner of the or along this edge of the arrow and then I'm gonna drag this area off to the right here and just kinda start pushing this off to the side so it starts matching up with the the general shape of the arrow or the logo and so you just kinda kinda have to tinker with this until it gets into a shape that you kind of like and make sure that's not too far off of the logo itself so I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good as it is so I'll go ahead and check mark it and I'll move on to the next little bit of fire right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and use that same concept to make all of these different fire images match up with the shape of the the far left arrow for my logo Okay, so in my opinion, I made something pretty good looking here, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you what all of these ended up looking like. So I started off with this one right here, and I don't remember the exact process I just went. But so I went ahead and made this one kind of the same shape as the arrow, and then the next one I pretty much did the same thing, but I left it a little bit bigger to get a little bit more of a fill going on when these two are uh, together. The third one that I threw in there, I actually made it so that it would fit the shape up here because it looked like I was kind of missing a little bit of a little fill right there. I was It was a little bit too dark for my liking, so I went ahead and put that right there. Then next up is this one right here, which I actually put in so I could have a little bit more of a point going on, and it fills in a little bit more of the brightness. And then this area right here seemed to be lacking a little bit, so my last one actually kind of filled that in, as well as giving a little bit more brightness up here in the upper left-hand area right there. So that's the general concept that I use when I look at these kinds of things. I say, okay, this is not bright enough. I'll go ahead and put some fire here, or I'll warp it so that it kind of comes out and extends to get that little area right there. That's the general concept that I use. Whatever you do on your own is you know up to you as long as it works for you so what you want to do after you you know have one of these finished is go ahead and close up that group right there and pretty much just duplicate the group again down here and go to the center left and you're basically gonna go through the same process but I recommend going in a different order of fire that you use to to make up the the shape because that way it gives the fire a little bit more variety I suppose you could say as long as you start going into different steps and different processes and different ways of making them bend will make the fire look more random and thus make it look a little bit more realistic perhaps so I'm just gonna go ahead and let you toy with the warp tool on your own whereas I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up you know keep doing my own thing and let you figure it out and do what you want.
Okay, so when you're finally finished getting all these different fire images together and kind of bending them and warping them around, you can go ahead and just turn off the logo right here so you don't have to see that really dumb outline behind it. And then you get this little effect right here. So I'm sorry this was rather blunt. I mean, there's really not much I could do to, you know, show you how to do this. All I could do is give you those few pointers with, you know, bend it here and you know make it turn into a point here blah 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 so hopefully you're able to toy with the warp tool a little bit figure out how it works and get an effect that you like yourself so thank you for watching i hope you were able to enjoy this tutorial and you got something useful out of it go ahead and keep sending us requests we're getting plenty of them and it's awesome so keep them coming thanks again we shall see you next time